I need to get this Air 30 blade set off of this Air 40 wind turbine and I'll put this set back on the workshop wind turbine. We've got a new blade set for the Air 40 that's installed on that hub. to jump oh no it's cracked already well I guess I got cracked in the fall the other one's cracked too and it's still been hanging in there for years gave me new bolts but I'm not going to use them I'll check all these Cat back on. We're done with this little project for today. Just got to get the other blade set on the workshop. And we'll turn this one on. So there's not enough wind right now. Shop.
What was that? Tools back in the bag. Well, the next task is to get my rain gutters put back up. Don't think we're going to get any more snow this year. And they are calling for rain next week, so I want to be able to capture that first couple of rainstorms. It hasn't been getting cold enough to really freeze the drums overnight. I mean, it's getting down to 30 degrees, but it's it needs to stay there for like a day or two for it to really start icing up the barrels. So that's the consideration for the rain catchment system is having the system full of water and having it freeze up. If the water freezes up in your water pump or in your lines, you're going to have busted lines and uh, busted water pumps. So I'll keep an eye on the temperatures and I'll come out and I'll drain the water pump and the lines if it does freeze. I don't think the water barrels are going to freeze solid enough to damage those. You might get an inch or two of ice on the top, but that's not going to hurt them. What hurts those water barrels is if you leave them full and they freeze solid over the winter. So I'm going to snap a chalk line and make sure that it's draining down. Uh, I got the old screw holes, so I can pretty much go off of them. I don't, well, I do see the old chalk line, but I'll re-snap a new one just to make sure and get the gutter put back up, get it hooked up, get everything rigged up for the rain. It's so nice in the summer having the rain catchment system. You don't have to go run down to the lake and fill up water jugs and do that over and over and over. Every time it rains, you know you got water. While it's raining and your water barrels are full, that's the time to use your water. Do laundry, wash the dishes, fill up all the water jugs, and then make sure all those are full while you're getting the rain. If you wait for the rain to stop and then use the water in your water barrels, now you don't have any water in your water barrels. So, as soon as those are full and it's still raining, make sure you fill everything up, do the laundry, all that mess. Well, I need to redo all those screws. I know I did the other side with uh, Robertson screws. Don't fall off the porch. That's never good. Good. So it's almost that time for the bears to start coming back out. I haven't seen any tracks yet, but it's getting there. So the electric fence is up and going. I energize that when I go inside, especially during the night, maybe not during the day. I don't get it set up. All right, let's start hanging brackets. And I got some screws I gotta replace. 
So I really hate these brackets. Sometimes you really have to struggle to get the gutter snapped into it. Other times it snaps right in. This side had all Phillips screws and I detest them. So I put uh, Robertson screws and everything on this side. The other side already set up that way. Both the wind turbines are back up and powered on, but waiting on the wind. Sometime in the future, I want to uh, devise a system on hinges so I can just unhinge it and store it underneath the eave for the winter. All these brackets here will have to be attached to some sort of hinge mechanism. But I don't know. It's, it's not that difficult to take the whole thing down every year and then put it up in the spring. So that one's in pretty solid. Looks good. Press both of these together at this joint. This is the hardest part of the whole, the whole deal. Watch it just slide together this time. Hope it does. I know what I need to do. A little dish soap on that. Dish soap on that joint. Should help it out. Yes, that's the trick. Everything else is snapped in. Add my little piece here. We're all set. We're ready to catch water. Okay. Same thing again, just get a little dish soap on this. <clears throat> Come on, get in there.
we go. All right, this side. Cut a couple inches off of this one. Cut. Perfect. Anchor that up there with the screw. Gutters are done. Now I need to set the barrels up. to get that one strapped in. The barrel's blowing away. Get this leveled a little bit. It's quite a bit off. Mainly because of the ice that's over here. And let me get this one strapped in. All right, guys, my water catchment system is up. I am just waiting on rain. Yeah. There's the six by six that I'm gonna use for the shower sauna. Speaking of the shower sauna, that is where it's going to be. Right on the edge of that cliff. So I'm going to drill holes down into the rock and secure some threaded rod in there. I'm going to pour some concrete footers with rebar in them. And then I'll build the wood on top of that. It's going to be a small shower sauna, but it's going to have an awesome view looking over Mount Denali. It's going to be essentially the same size as what I have now. So that door is the only window in the shower sauna. I think it's gonna stay that way too. Even the pitch of the roof, which is like nothing. It'll be fine over here. It'll be even better on the edge of the cliff because of the winds. That's one of the reasons that I'm gonna secure the heck out of it to the cliff face. Sometimes you get 70 mile an hour winds, sometimes 100. That's pretty infrequent, but. So the shower sauna is going to be right on that edge. And then right here, 
where I chop wood, that's where the woodshed's gonna be, right here. Both of those structures are gonna be torn down. Shower sauna, workshop. Workshop's going way over by the landing zone, which is an excellent location for it. I'll keep one snow machine in here. So right now my ATV is too wide. It scrapes going in and coming out. That door is not big enough for my ATV. I can get it in there, but it's, it's not fun. So the workshop will have space for both snow machines, the ATV, and the third snow machine is going to be in here, which will probably be the white one is where I'm going to keep that. I want the mountain sleds over by the landing zone because I'll use them first to blaze a trail over here. Down there, I'll go around and come back up that back trail onto the main trail, back to the landing zone. So that I'll have my circle made. Park the mountain sled here, get the work sled out and go retrieve my stuff from the landing zone. It's gonna have an oil drip stove in the workshop. Shower sauna has a wood stove in it and I'm gonna to have to bring that up the hill here. It's not gonna to be too bad, but it's about 490 pounds. So the shower sauna will be heated with wood. And that is where it's gonna go. The front door is gonna face the mountain. It's gonna have a small porch with steps coming off the left side here. And the winds that I get out of the north and northeast, it should keep that roof pretty clear. I mean, that roof right there has withstood 25 years. And it's like a, a two and 12, <laughs> maybe. One and 12. All right, I'm gonna go chill out for a couple minutes and then I'm gonna come out and put a different glove box on this. It's a larger one. And it's gonna have my GPS mounted on the front. And then this one gets a Munster throttle, just like the turbo. Take that throttle off, put a Munster throttle on here. Last thing I need to do is install the water filters. So the water comes up here first, then through here. So the first thing we want to put in is a sediment filter. charcoal. I am ready for rain. So it's always nice to have a working faucet. That only works in the summer when the water catchment system is operating. All right, so I pulled off the old glove box, which didn't have much room, and put on this new one. A bunch of room in here, and I can mount my GPS from the other snow machine. I need to get up adapter for the electronics but for now the gps can run on battery 
So after I'm done this, I'm going to move over to the Polaris 9R and install the finger throttle. So here's the old glove box lid sat way down like that. This one has a whole lot more room and the mount for the GPS. Snow is really starting to break up. I can still ride, but a couple more days of warm temperatures and you'll just slide all over the place. Probably ride in the mornings when it's still cold out, but later in the day, if the sun comes out, I can be able to ride. 